In March of 2008, Frank Joostra threw another crazy fundraising party for Bill Clinton. Shakira was there. Tom Cruise was there. John Travolta was there. And 16 million more dollars went to the Clinton Foundation. Between 2008 and 2010, 8.65 million dollars went to the Clinton Foundation from investors with connections to Eurasia Energy and Uranium One. Meanwhile, in Russia, how amazeballs would it be to buy Uranium One? Okay, I heard that Bill Clinton likes money, so I'm just gonna like bribe people and stuff. If I can make this plan work, we're gonna be covered in awesome sauce! William Campbell, I need your help. My sources tell me Putin is plotting to take over the world's uranium market. I need you to find proof. Yes, Robert Mueller. Right away, Robert Mueller. It's now January 2009, and Obama has just been sworn in as the 44th president of the United States. Hi, Hillary. I was just thinking, isn't it funny how a guy like me, with almost no experience, was able to beat you in a presidential election? Huh? Uh, don't worry, Hillary. I'm sure nothing like that could ever happen again. Besides, I made you Secretary of State. So we're cool, right? Oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need you to sign this contract promising that you are not gonna run any pay-for-play scams with uh, Slick Willie. All right, now uh, get out of my office. Hillary Clinton is laughing for several reasons. The first is that she set up that private email server nine days ago. So if she ever gets subpoenaed over her shady dealings, which she does, She's just gonna erase 33,000 emails, which she did. Now, that piece of paper Obama told her to sign said that she was going to disclose the donors to the Clinton Foundation. Earlier, I said to remember the Clinton-Justra Enterprise Partnership and the Clinton-Justra Enterprise Partnership Canada. They were both set up back in 2007, just in time for Hillary Clinton's first presidential bid. Now, according to the Clintons and Justra's interpretation of Canadian law, donor names can't be made public without the donor's written consent. So donors, which weren't even all Canadian, we don't actually even know where they all were from, gave money to the Clinton-Justra Enterprise Partnership Canada. Then then, the Clinton Juster Enterprise Partnership Canada turned around and gave almost all of that money to the Clinton Juster Enterprise Partnership. And the Clinton Foundation only listed the Clinton Juster Enterprise Partnership as the donor. This is how they were able to hide most of the $2.35 million that they received from Uranium One Chairman Ian Tolfer, as well as additional millions from other people connected to Uranium One, foreign governments, and other deals. In 2015, it came out that there were 1,100 undisclosed mystery donors to the Clinton Foundation. They also tried to use the excuse that the Canadian branch of the clinton Juster Enterprise Partnership was just there so that Canadians could benefit from tax breaks. But guys like Ian Tolfer, who donated through his family's charity, the Fernwood Foundation, wouldn't have qualified for such breaks because he already received a tax break when he donated to the Fernwood Foundation. And by 2010, the Canadian government approved a measure that allowed Canadian citizens to donate directly to the Clinton Foundation and receive tax breaks. Yes, when I told you that I was going to disclose my donors, what I actually meant to say was go f yourself. Finally, Hillary Clinton knows that there's no inspector general at state to oversee compliance with laws, regulations, and departmental procedures. That office went vacant about a year before she started her tenure as Secretary of State and it won't be filled until eight months after she's gone. So Bill Clinton is running into the State Department every five minutes, asking for permission to take money from foreign governments and donors, and the answer is yes, 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 and yes. Former president's speaking fees decrease over time, but not Slick Willie's, no, 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 his skyrocket while his wife is Secretary of State. And he's pulling in 
$500,000 paydays and $750,000 paydays just for giving 45 minute speeches. Or so they would have us believe. In 2009, Russia was trying to buy a 17% stake in Uranium One, but Mukhtar Jarvashev was against it. Jarvashev wanted Kazakhstan not just to be an extractor of raw uranium, but also a country that enriches it. Jarvashev's plan went against Russia's wishes. Jarvashev convinced the Japanese to buy a 20% stake in Uranium One, and he was in the process of getting the Chinese to buy another 20%. But before the Chinese deal could be finalized, Putin visited Kazakhstan and Jarvashev was arrested days later. WikiLeaks published cables from American diplomats that showed that Jarvashev's arrest was part of a Russian power play for uranium control in Kazakhstan. Jarvashev was charged with illegally selling the uranium mines and keeping the proceeds for himself. Jarvashev was sentenced to 14 years in prison and his daughter reported that he was denied lawyers, convicted in two secret trials, and was denied treatment for his high blood pressure. In 2015, the UN Human Rights Committee asked Kazakh officials to cancel his conviction and release him from jail. He's considered to be a political prisoner by numerous international human rights organizations. The arrest of Jarvashev in May of 2009 caused a lot of turmoil for Uranium One investors. Their stock price dropped as people speculated as to whether or not they'd be allowed to keep their interest in the Kazakh mines. Uranium One chief executive John Nattier told the public that everything was okay because, quote, when you do a transaction in Kazakhstan, you need the government's approval, end quote. And he added that Eurasia Energy had definitely had that approval. But that wasn't enough for the Uranium One officials. They wanted written proof that they had access to those mines. So they appealed to the American Embassy for help, and the American Embassy ultimately reported to the Secretary of State. Hillary Clinton was forwarded the pleas for help and the $1 million that Uranium One Chairman Ian Tolfer gave the Clintons that year, I am sure, had no influence at all on the American Embassy deciding to intervene on his behalf. Three days later, Rosatom purchased 17% of Uranium One. Once again, Frank Juster's buddies made a ton of money. But that 17% had to be approved by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, or CFIUS for short, because Uranium One controlled 20% of the United States uranium reserves. The CFIUS board is comprised of the heads of nine departments and offices, including the Secretary of State. Hillary Clinton had been a huge proponent of CFIUS during her presidential campaign as she pushed to strengthen it. As Secretary of State, she supported blocking China from buying U.S. assets. But when it came to Uranium One, she acted as if she didn't even know what CFIUS was. There were nine government agencies who had to sign off on that deal. I was not personally involved because that wasn't something the Secretary of State did. Yeah, except that was exactly what the Secretary of State did, according to the Department of Treasury. You see, Hillary Clinton's not dumb. She knows she's taken millions of dollars from Uranium One and Eurasia Energy connected donors. So she sent her assistant secretary, Jose Fernandez, in her wake in June of 2009. It only took one no vote to kick the deal out of the committee, and then it would have had to go straight to the president. But nobody objected. All in favor. It was almost as if Hillary Clinton was one of the most powerful people in the world and everybody thought she was going to be the next president and no one wanted to upset her because she and her friends were going to make millions and millions of dollars off the deal. By December 2009, thanks to WikiLeaks, we know that the U.S. ambassador to Kazakhstan sent a classified cable to D.C. warning Russia wanted control over Kazakhstan's uranium market as part of a broader strategy to reestablish itself as a world power. Meanwhile, in Russia. In 2010, Russia said it wanted a 51% stake in Uranium One, and it totally promised to keep the company public, and that it didn't want to own any more than 51% of Uranium One. Not only would this require another CFIUS vote, but it also set off alarm bells everywhere. Multiple members of Congress were upset and even pushed for a bill to try to stop it. 
Wyoming Senator John Barrasso wrote a letter to the Obama administration voicing his concerns and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission wrote back they told Barrasso not to worry because all of the uranium that was produced in America was going to stay in America and that Uranium One didn't even have an export license so the uranium couldn't leave the country even if they wanted it to. Except it did. From 2012 to 2014, did some of America's uranium go to Iran? Eh, who cares? A little uranium never killed anybody. While all this was going on, the Clintons were super busy collecting millions and millions of dollars from people and corporations that needed Cepheus approval so that those people and corporations could make even more money. On March 19th in 2010, Hillary Clinton went to Moscow and Netflixed and chilled with Putin. Days after her return to America, in the biggest coincidence ever, Bill Clinton's lawyer asked for permission for Bill to go to Moscow to do a speech for $500,000. And of course, the answer was yes. A Russian bank with links to the Kremlin called Renaissance Capital was the sponsor, and Renaissance Capital was pushing Uranium One stock. In May of 2010, Salida Capital co-sponsored a Bill Clinton speech and donated $780,000 to the Clinton Foundation that year. Salida Capital is owned by Rosatom, the Russians. From 2010 until 2012, Salida Capital gave $2.6 million to the Clintons. In June of 2010, just months before the Cepheus vote, not only did Bill Clinton go to Moscow to give the $500,000 45-minute speech, but while he was there, he Netflixed and chilled with Putin too. And Uranium One Chairman Ian Tolfer slid the Clintons a cool $250,000 that year. My goodness, Robert Mueller, it's worse than we thought. I've uncovered two nefarious plots. The first is that the Russians are using bribery kickbacks and threats to compromise the American uranium trucking firm Transport Logistics International. The second is that the Russians are gonna use the lobbying firm ARPCO to funnel millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation to help win Cepheus approval. Putin also said something about squad goals and some sort of sauce that was awesome. But look man, we've got to stop the Cepheus vote from going through. I have all kinds of proof. I got pictures, I got videos, I got 5,000 documents. I even have an email from the Russians specifically asking me to help them overcome opposition to the Uranium One deal. We gotta warn Congress and the President and the American people. That's right, they hit him with a gag order. But Trump lifted that gag order in 2017. When William Campbell asked why Obama's FBI kept the illegal Russian corruption in the U.S. nuclear industry a secret and allowed the Cepheus vote to go through in October of 2010, a FBI agent told him to, quote, ask your politics, unquote. We're here today because Russia wants to control 20% of our uranium reserves. This is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you guys remember last year when Russia got mad at the Ukraine and shut their gas off? and 18 countries like Germany, Greece, Italy, and France are all affected because their natural gas supplies were transported through the Ukraine. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say that Russia should control exactly 0% of our uranium reserves. The only way you could possibly vote for this nonsense would be if either you were a morally bankrupt, soul-sucking demon prostitute, or if you are the morally bankrupt, soul-sucking, demon prostitute's brain-dead flunky. All in favor. Now while it's true, the department heads can send assistant or deputy secretaries in less controversial cases. Former Cepheus members and experts agreed that Russia wanting controlling interest in Uranium One should have commanded attention from the department heads themselves. Richard Russell, who was on the committee under George W. Bush said, quote, 
This deal had generated press, it had captured the attention of Congress, and it was strategically important. When I was there, invariably, any one of those conditions would cause this to get pushed way up the chain. And here, you had all three. End quote. Not long after making crazy money from the CFIUS vote that threatened her national security, Ian Tolfer gave $600,000 to the Clinton Foundation, followed by another $500,000 in 2012. In 2013, Rostam took 100% control of Uranium One and made it a private company, which is exactly what they said they wouldn't do. Now, who could have foreseen such a thing happening? I don't know. Like, maybe everyone? Ever? Yeah. Russia didn't ask for permission. They just did it. And the U.S. stood down while Russia announced that Russian nuclear energy conquered the world with the release of an article titled, Russian Nuclear Energy Conquers the World. When it was all said and done, the Clintons would take in more than $145 million from sources connected to the Uranium One and Eurasia Energy deal. We still don't know the exact amount, partly because the clinton Justra Enterprise Partnership Canada continues to hide the names of over a thousand foreign donors. The Uranium One scandal is only one example out of many where people gave the Clintons millions of dollars and then, as if by magic, their business deals went through. You may be asking if this is a clear case of pay for play. And the answer is that outside of someone saying, yes, I absolutely took money for favors, you got me, there is never a clear case of pay for play. That is something for a jury to decide. But I will say this. The Clinton Foundation has taken in $2 billion since its inception in 2001. And it's not a secret that the vast majority of that money does not go to help poor people. So am I supposed to believe that foreign governments and multimillionaires and billionaires gave the Clintons $2 billion just because they thought Bill Clinton was a swell guy? Yeah, and I guess I'm also not supposed to notice that the donations to the Clinton Foundation have plummeted since she lost the 2016 election. It's been debunked. Well, sure. If you just ignore 98% of the information, then yes, it's been totally debunked. Okay, so let me get this straight. You took more than $145 million from sources connected to Eurasia Energy and Uranium One, including the Russians. Yes. And you were in a position to assist them. Yes. And they got what they wanted. Yes. And you used the Clinton Justra Enterprise Partnership Canada to hide some of their names, even though you promised Obama you would disclose them. Yes. But there's no proof. Yeah, well, I got about 145 million pieces of evidence that say otherwise. Do you realize what you've done to us? Do you know that in April of 2018, the Russian Duma proposed legislation to terminate all nuclear cooperation with the United States and its allies? And we are now importing 40% of our uranium from Russia, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. 20% of our energy comes from nuclear power. You jeopardized our national security by helping put Russia in a position where it could threaten our energy supply. For a quick buck! Strike me down. What, with all of my hatred, so my journey to the dark side will be complete? Nah, I got a better idea. Lock her up. Subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and please share it. This is a totally new video style for me, so let me know if you want to see more of it by leaving me a comment in the comment section. I'm Right from Right Left of Center, and if you're watching, you're probably right too.